took. We are 11th grade students from Mission Tosem High School, and tonight we are going to be talking about how anybody can become an innovator. Let's start. So, innovation is a crucial part of our ever-growing society. It is the act of creating something new, improving on it, bringing new ideas, and making something that might change the lives of many. Our society is fueled by innovations, so it is very important to know the essentials of innovation. So, let's talk about that for a bit. What makes something a great innovation? There are a lot of factors that contribute to the making of an innovation, but I'll be going over some of them. First of all, I think that the most important part of creating an innovation is adding new things to it, bringing new ideas to the table. Now, before getting more into detail, I want to talk about different types of innovation. Specifically, I want to talk about incremental innovation and disruptive innovation. Incremental innovation takes something that already exists and just improves it, optimizes it. It doesn't bring anything too new to the table. While disruptive innovation is uh, brings something revolutionary, something new, something that nobody has thought of before. Now, to give an example for, for incremental innovation, you can think of the new iPhone 14. It is not much different from the iPhone 13. It only has some slight improvements and optimizations. While a great example of disruptive innovation is, I forgot to change slide. A great, a great uh, example of disruptive innovation is refrigerators. Now, before refrigeration, people used to go to frozen lakes and cut blocks of ice and then insulate them and then sell them to people. Now, we all have machines that can cool things and generate ice at our homes. We can make a great example of great comparison between incremental innovation and disruptive innovation here. Incremental innovation is trying to figure out how to harvest ice more efficiently, how to figure out better methods that require less manpower or effort. While disruptive innovation is uh, trying out something new, inventing the refrigerator, which can just cool things off and generate ice for free at our homes. It doesn't need any manpower. You don't need anyone to cut blocks of ice and then sell it to you anymore. Now, of course, incremental innovation also plays an important part here. As you can see, the first refrigerators were really that advanced. So if it weren't for the people who improved it, who made it more cost efficient and made it better at cooling, maybe we wouldn't all have refrigerators at our homes. But if it wasn't for the person who decided to try out something new, we would still be trying to figure out new methods of harvesting ice. Uh, that's why I think adding new things, trying new things for your innovations is always the better option. Now, you can think of it as if you made, if you took something that already exists and then you only just added some improvements to it, you optimized it, you didn't really bring something new to it. I can assure you that there are thousands of people who can do the same thing much better than you. But if you add something new to it, if you add your own twist to it, to make it your own, to make it separate from others, then you are the only person, maybe you are the only person who makes such a product and then you become the best at your field, at least at what you're doing. Now, besides that, uh, another important thing about innovation is creating goals that are focused on making meaning, making impact. Your goals should be based on, uh, you should set up with a goal which is based on improving and adding to people's lives. And finally, you should be keep 
you should keep changing it. You should keep improving, evolving it, fine-tuning its details into perfection. Otherwise, your innovation will simply wither away in the passing of the time. Now, those are what I think to be the essentials of innovation. And now we will talk about uh, the little project, the innovation that we made last year with my friend. As you might have seen, about this time last year, we had achieved the second place in the national high school level research competition of Twitter. We, as a small team, we had nothing but a strong aim to make the change towards a better future with an app that is truly related to all of us. Now, what is this app we made? Let's talk about it. Our innovation is called Upper, which stands for All for Earth Project. As you might have guessed from the name of it, our mission is to protect the world and our future generations from further environmental damage, pollution, and global warming. However, what makes this project innovative is the way we achieve this. The app is based on encouraging people to reduce their carbon footprint and changing their mindsets by building down daily habits. Now let's take a closer look into our app. After we sign in and make an account, we see the home screen. And on the top of the home screen, we have a box of information that talks about, that gives information about today's environment. And under that, we have our daily task box that we have to complete. You take a photo, uh, you complete the task by taking a photo, by the way. You take a photo and upload, upload it to the app's post page, where everyone using the app can see and like your photos. Completing a task gives you three points. However, getting likes also gives you more points. Now you might be wondering, why is getting points important? Well, the answer is, each month when you reach a certain number of points, a tree is planted in your name, an actual tree. This way, we create a social environment where people can build their eco-friendly habits and actually help the environment. Because the best thing we can do to stop environmental pollution as a small team of two people is not by cleaning the environment ourselves, but rather spreading awareness to millions of people in order to, in order to prevent the pollution from happening while we still have limited time in the first place. Now, in order to turn our idea into a product, we had to go through these four stages. These are idea creation, preparation, development, and the experimentation process. Now, everything started in 2021 when two 10th grade students met up in the cafeteria and had this exact conversation. Hey, so uh, do you want to make a project about the environment? Uh, sure. What are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. We then met up in the library with our teacher and decided to make an app about saving the world. At least we had the idea ready. And with this, our one and a half year long journey officially started. We now went on with the preparations. Preparations was, preparation process was very hard since it covered basically everything from the design of our app, research, originality of it, to how we were gonna create and present it, present it to other people and to the juries. And due to it being the middle of our school's midterm exams. On the other hand, we had the idea of developing the app. The idea of developing the app was easy. However, actually developing the app with codes was very hard. It took a very long time and consumed most of our time. There were times where we worked for a project instead of joining our classes and entering our midterm exams. We had to stay and work till 6 p.m. for our project for months in order to complete it on time for the competition. We had another job, like we haven't just finished completing the app. Completing the app was just the start of the experimentation process, which was an actual and essential part of the tech competition, to tech finals. Yes, we did advertise and test our app a lot. We presented our work to as many people as we can and tried to make improvements from the feedbacks that we have gotten from them. Now, with all of these stages completed, we wouldn't be here on stage casually talking about our experiences about innovation. However, we are still on this journey, imagining how we can still improve our app in search for a brighter future and a cleaner world for our future generations. As you can understand from our journey, making innovation is definitely not easy. It requires a lot of effort, teamwork, brainstorming, creativity, 
research, and most importantly, patience. However, we went through a whole new journey where we practiced all these challenges. However, there's one thing I can certainly say about ourselves. We are not the same person anymore. Taking these steps at this early age has given us a lot. Starting from presentation skills, confidence, logical thinking, organization skills, planning, increased sense of responsibility, and you know what the most important thing is? Being a good team player. We are still following this journey, and every day, we are defining our strengths, becoming a better version of ourselves, and building our dream future selves characteristics. On top of all the individual benefits of working on an innovative project, innovation is crucial to the progress of our world. I wouldn't be standing here giving you all a speech through a slideshow projected on screen, if not for the bright minds who pioneered such inventions. Now, the, these inventions that we now see as inseparable to our lives were not always accepted. They were actually ridiculed and criticized in the past by many. For example, uh, Alexander Graham Bell, when he invented the first telephone, was dismissed by the Western Union, who said that it was hardly more than a toy. Tom Edison, when he made the first practical light bulb, was criticized by Henry Morton, president of Stevens Institute of Technology, who claimed that everyone acquainted with the field would recognize it as a failure. And quite ironically, Nikola Edison then criticized Nikola Tesla's alternating currents saying that nobody will use it ever. Now, as much as an inventor Edison was, clearly he wasn't great at making predictions because everything you see in this room is powered by Tesla's alternating currents. As you can see from what history tells us, there were and always be someone, that one person, who will ridicule and underestimate your ideas, no matter how important and beneficial that can be for the future. Don't let them stop you from pursuing your dreams. Always be the one believing in yourself and your ideas. What's important is to keep going with your ideas and your goals. It's okay to take criticism and learn from your mistakes. But this doesn't mean you should let others bring down your ideas. And always remember that all great things start with just an idea, just like flowers. Over it. <laughs> These innovations that are now the greatest uh, are the greatest accomplishments of our age were not always this great. Work. They were actually very flawed when they were first made, but that did not lower their value. What was important is that they were the ones who dared to venture into the dark. They were the ones who tried new things to try and accomplish things that are considered by considered as just foolish dreams by many. Even though their projects may not be flawless at the beginning, they shone light to the path that others must take. And despite all the ridicule, despite all the criticism, they didn't stop from going after their, their goals. And those people are who are written in the history as the greatest innovators of our age. Now, not all of us will become the next Edison or Tesla, but I do think we all have the capability to create something meaningful, whether that be something that changes the world, something that just spreads across our hometown, or maybe just something that helps our friends and family. You don't need me or anyone else telling you guiding you to create, to learn, to make meaning. Oh, you have access to all the information available to mankind in your pockets. All you need to start is one simple idea. Thank you for listening.